Hi everyone, today we're looking at quite a special camera from the early 2000s, the Voigtlander Bessaflex TM. The Voigtlander Bessaflex TM was made in the early 2000s and I've written on Cosmophoto before about how this camera might have been 20 years ahead of its time. That might seem a slightly weird thing to say about a camera which essentially looks like it came out of the 1970s. But I think Cosina, who, who made this camera under the Voigtlander name, essentially made a camera that we're crying out for now. But unfortunately they released it in 2003, which was the period when digital was really in the ascendant and starting to really take over uh, first professional and then consumer photography. Casina had the idea in the early 2000s of making a family of cameras all using essentially the same body that would be able to use all of the, the heritage legacy lenses uh, that might be lying around people's uh, camera drawers. Um, some of the cameras that you might use these lenses on might have uh, failed um, mechanical or electric problems or you know you can no longer buy the batteries for them that kind of thing so what Casina intended was to have uh, a basic camera body that came with different lens mounts and they at least on the drawing board wanted to do one for Olympus OM, Canon FD, Nikon F, Pentax PK, Minolta MD and M42 lenses what they did is they took a basic model, which they, they first bought out in uh, the 1980s, the Casina CT1. That camera had been tweaked and reworked basically to create an entry level camera for a load of uh, big name brands such as Olympus and Nikon. Cameras like the Nikon FN10, uh, they're actually a, a Casina made camera using uh, pretty much this design. So the Bessaflex was a tried and trusted design. Uh, the shutter, for instance, is the same one used in the Besser R range of rangefinders that Casino also made uh, in the late 90s and the early 2000s. The TM model was the first to be released, TM meaning thread mount, M42 mount. But unfortunately, it also ended up being the only one released because I think the rise of digital maybe took Casino by surprise. Uh, they had plans for all the other models, but um, they, they simply weren't viable. The Bessaflex is a 1980s body which has been brought up to date a little bit. So for instance, you have a, a top speed of 1 2,000th compared to the maximum shutter speed of 1 1,000th that you might find on a a camera from the 1970s. The 70s was really the the golden age of M42 lenses. You still had uh, companies like Pentax, Ricoh, uh, Praktika in East Germany, Zeiss Icon and Voigtlander in, in Germany making M42 models with some really really good lenses. The thing about M42 is it wasn't a proprietary lens mount. Uh, there was no licensing that had to be done to make lenses for um, M42. So there are hundreds of different camera models from uh, camera makers, big and small, and thousands of different lenses made by everyone from Pentacon in East Germany, Pentax, Ricoh, Chinon uh, in Japan, Loads of third-party lens makers like Vivitar, Sigma, uh, Miticon, uh, through to you know Russian lens makers um, making things for cameras like the Zenit E series. So the the M42 mount, I think, was uh, the perfect lens mount to launch the Bessaflex concept with, um, because you had all of these great lenses. You had a modern lightweight body which takes modern batteries. The Best Effects takes just a, a couple of LR44 batteries to run the meter. Otherwise, everything else is completely manual. You have manual lever wind, 
a manual shutter. Literally the only thing being run by the, the battery is the, the meter. Um, you set the ISO speed of your film and you use the switch, stop down switch to meter. So the, the better flex uh, has ISO up to 1,600, so that's certainly better than a lot of the M42 cameras uh, from the 60s um, that would go sometimes only up to 800. Uh, it's not as high spec as the Pentax, later Pentax uh, cameras, like the Spotmatic Air for the ES2, um, but it's similar to the Practicas, certainly better than a lot of the Zenit cam cameras, which sort of peaked at about ISO 400, 640 most of the time. Another great feature of this camera is the extremely bright finder. When you look through, through the viewfinder, uh, compare that to pretty much any M42 camera, apart from the Fujika SDs, and you'll be amazed at how bright the view is. Um, that's great if you want to use this camera for portraits or to shoot stuff in lower light. Um, it, it's certainly one of the plus points for using this camera, I think. So the Bessaflex isn't as hard wearing heavyweight as the 70s, you know, mainly metal cameras. It does have a metal frame, but there are quite a few plastic parts in it as well. That has to be noted though, I would also point out that this is still quite a robust camera. I bought this one new when the Vespex came out in 2003. I once had three of these cameras, ended up selling uh, two of them, mainly because I graduated to using some Pentax M42 mount stuff for travel. But in all the years I've owned this camera, all I've had to do is replace the batteries. The shutter's still working absolutely fine. The light seals are still intact. There's no cracks, no dents you know, a little bit of rubbing of the paint, but I kind of like that on a camera. It shows that it's been used, which this camera certainly has. I put hundreds of rolls through the Bessaflexes and found them to be really nice cameras to travel with because they're relatively lightweight. And so you could bring one or two more lenses with you, uh, especially if you're having to cram all your gear into a, a cabin bag like uh, I was often doing with the Bessaflexes. So the Bessaflex was only made for about two or three years. Uh, I think it was discontinued in around 2006. Uh, and that's a real shame because it kind of appeared in the, in the dead time for film cameras when there was this tidal wave of uh, digital cameras coming out. Digital SLRs were becoming uh, better and better with each new generation. Film cameras found themselves in this unfortunate position. Now, if Casino had released something like this in 2014, 2015, I think we would have seen an entire new generation of uh, Bessaflex cameras in all those lens mounts I mentioned, because what we're now seeing is uh, film on the rebound, more people getting into film, more people buying film cameras, and so uh, those film cameras, especially SLRs, that are left, that are still working, the price for those is going up and up and up. The film SLRs that were in 2004, 2005, only $100, now they're $200, $300, $500. So if Casino bought out a camera like this today, at a similar price, I think they'd be absolutely snapped up. The Bessaflex is, in a way, the kind of ancestor of what the Reflex project was trying to do. Uh, Reflex, if you haven't heard about it, was a, a Kickstarter project to bring out a new SLR. Uh, it launched in 2017 and they raised more than 100 and £20,000 uh, on Kickstarter to bring out a M42 mount SLR. Now, the difference between Bessaflex and Reflex was the Reflex project wanted to 
update a body like this with a few extra frills like a removable back, um, Bluetooth compatibility, all stuff that obviously the Bessaflex doesn't have, didn't need to have, and I'd argue the Reflex didn't need to have either. The Reflex also wanted to bring out uh, multiple lens mounts, which again is something that the Bessaflex was intended for right from the very start. It's just an accident of timing that we didn't see this basic design come out in Olympus OM mount or Canon FD mount. Um, it's a shame they didn't because uh, I think we would have seen a real renaissance of film possibly a little bit earlier if they'd been able to bring out this family of cameras. So you can still find Besser flexes today though they're certainly not as common as the 1960s and 70s M42 mount cameras. Often the cameras coming from Japan are collector's cameras. They'll come with the box um, and the price is usually north of 500 pounds. But with a little bit of patience, you can find uh, Bessaflexes being sold in the UK or Europe for less than that. 300, 350 pounds. Uh, I've certainly seen them recently in the UK for around that price. As I said, I used to have three of these and I did sell two, but I'm certainly keeping this one for posterity because it's a camera that traveled with me all around the world and it's certainly one I wanna keep using in the future.